Today I'm going to be talking about how healing manifests. So stay tuned for the teaching. I'm on the subject of the manifestation of healing, and I want to give some insight that's important because you see, if you're not careful, you can relate to the physical body, the problems within a body and empower the problem because you don't understand the difference between healing manifesting when it's a human helping you and healing manifesting when it's Jesus that's healing you. There's a difference between the two because how humans help us in the context of manifestation of healing is different because it's how humans help humans. And with humans, when problems, when they're completely successful, whatever methods or ways they use, then the problem's gone, then you're free. But it's not that way with God, because receiving from your Heavenly Father is about Jesus Christ. It's about the cross, and it worked completely opposite of the way humans help you, because you see, you're first free, then the problem goes. Freedom is about Jesus, and we're talking about the fact that how the life of Christ works on the inside of us, and it's important that you have God's perspective so that you don't empower the problem. You don't relate to the physical problem incorrectly by empowering it, because you find truth in the problem instead of finding in truth in Jesus Christ. And so I want to give a really wonderful example. I believe that because Jesus, again, is a living example and what he did. And so in Mark's gospel, chapter 11, we have the example starting in verse 12 of the fig tree. And I believe the fig tree gives us some really wonderful insight into the manifestation of healing and life's problems because it says in verse 12 that they had come out of Bethany and he was hungry and now seeing from afar a fig tree having leaves, he went to see for perhaps if he would find something on it, other words, figs. When he came to it, he found nothing but leaves, for it was not the season for figs. In response, Jesus said, let no one eat fruit from you ever again, and the disciples heard it. Now, I'm just going to stop there and expound on this, because you see Jesus rebuking and cursing a tree with words. I mean, that can affect a lot of people like, whoa, what is going on here? But the reality is really this. If you understand from a cultural perspective in Israel concerning the fig trees, look, in this area of Jerusalem, this area of, of the country where he was at, the, the fig trees, the type of fig trees they have, if there's, lee, uh, of, if there's leaves, then there should have been figs because it's the way things manifest. He found nothing but leaves, for it was not the season for figs. You see, the figs come first, then the leaves. And so there should have been figs already on the tree, but it wasn't. And so Jesus' response to this was that, hold it. You're communicating to me. It says nothing but leaves, for it's not the season. It says, verse 14, in response, Jesus said, when it says in response, it means there was a form of communication coming from the tree. The tree was communicating to Jesus. It was out of order. It was, well, let's put it this way. It was like it was perverted. It was out of God's natural divine order. And so it's like, whoa, uh-uh. I'm responding back to you because this is not God's order. There should have been figs if there had been the leaves. And so he cursed that tree because it was out of God's natural divine order, but with words. You see, God, you know, all things were created with words. And so with the same thing with words, authority is released, power is released with words. And so in response to the tree, Jesus spoke, said, let no one eat fruit for you ever again. You see, it was at that point that the tree lost its ability to live and sustain and sustain life because Jesus spoke with words to it. You see, I'm, I'm going to use that as an example of this, circumstances of life. When there's the circumstances of life that's contrary to the truth of God's word, then you need to realize that it's like, no, the circumstances are not truth. The circumstances may be a fact, but they're not the truth. They're not the reality. If you're not careful, you can let circumstances determine what is truth and reality to your heart, and you can let that be the overriding factor of truth. No, truth is found in Jesus Christ. It's like, no, when you see the wrong circumstances of life, 
that does not line up with God's word, truth found in Jesus Christ, you need to realize that it's perverted. It's out of God's natural order. And your heart needs to back up what your mouth says because with authority, you're going to be speaking words that's going to change the circumstances of life so they line up with the word of God, that line up with the truth of who we are and the truth that is found in Jesus Christ. You see, the rest of the story in the lesson of the fig tree says this in verse 19 in Mark's gospel, chapter 11, when evening had come, now time had passed. Jesus came out of Jerusalem, out of the city that he was on the way to and had gone in. But verse 20 says, now in the morning as they passed by, they saw the fig tree dried up from the roots. And Peter, remembering, said to him, Rabbi, look, the tree which you cursed has withered away. So Jesus answered and said to them, have faith in God. For assuredly, I say to you, whoever says to this mountain, be removed and be cast into the sea and does not doubt in his heart, but believes that those things he says will be done, he will have whatever he says. Therefore, I say to you, whatever things you ask when you pray, believe that you receive them and you will have them. Jesus showed them that when he spoke to the tree, his heart was back in the pulpit of his mouth to saying he was believing from the heart. He wasn't believing the problem. He was speaking the God's natural design into that situation. And so the tree, the scripture tells us this, the tree which you curse had withered away. In other words, the tree had died at the roots. And this is what they realized was that the tree had already been dead when Jesus spoke. It just looked like it was still alive. Don't empower life's problems by believing the problem because you see, in the area of healing as an example, when you speak with authority and the power of God is released, then look for physical change. Look for change because physical uh, problems lose their ability to live and stay in life and stay within the human body when the life of Christ is being released because you just release the life of Christ with authority. And when you release the life of Christ with authority, the power of God is working within a person. Look for change. Look for change. And the moment that you see that manifestation in the natural realm of physical change, know that it just lost its ability to stay within the human body because Jesus is doing the healing. It just died at the root, just like the fig tree. And the reason that you're getting better and better and better is not that you're healing until you're healed. No, you're healed. That's why you're healing because Jesus is doing the healing. <music> 